This is Kane 1906 with Whiteside Tactical Solution. Bring you Medical Monday Heart Attack Edition. Would you know what to do if somebody was having a heart attack? Orange County 911, what is the address of your emergency? That's Sparks Mountain Road, that's there. Okay, and what is your name? John Nettles. Mr. Nettles, what's the emergency? Tell me exactly what happened. I have a lot of pain in my left side of my chest and down my left arm. All right, we're sending the paramedics to help now. Stay on the line, I'll tell you what to do next. Are you home alone? 72-year-old male, left side of chest pain. He does have a smart 911. Go ahead, Orange. Smart 911, taking number two, three. Orange, paramedic 21. The heart is the size of a clenched fist. So if you ball your right hand into a fist, place it over your left pectoral muscle, over your left chest, and rotate it slightly, that's going to be the size of your heart. It's actually located behind the breastbone or what we call the ribs, the sternum. It pumps about 100,000 times a day. Now, with this, you need to understand that if you're in excellent condition, it may not pump as much because you have a slower heart rate. So that's something you have to think about. So some people may have a heart rate of about 55, 45, somewhere around there. Some people may have a rest of heart rate of 100. So again, it's an average. Not everybody, but it's an average of how many times a day it actually pumps. And it pumps about, and those keywords is about, pumps about 7,600 liters of blood per day. When looking at these pictures, these are some pictures that we're going to actually get into. Notice in this picture here blockage in the coronary artery, what we call atherosclerosis. And the image right here is actually of your coronary artery. We're going to get in details about that. One thing in particular, when having a heart attack, could be several causes. You have up in the top right corner, osteosclerosis with a blood clot. So if you notice the fat deposit at the bottom, which is yellowish, then at the top is the red, what we call the red blood cells, which in this case, they coagulate or they clump together. By doing that, Blood is not able to flow through the heart, or in this case, flow through the vessel. Because of that, blood is backing up, and that's causing damage. Notice in the section, second picture, osteosclerosis. Again, that's the fattening of the arteries, or the hardening of the arteries. You have your fat deposit on the top and the bottom. Notice you're able to flow through. Some blood is actually able to flow through, but not a lot. And because of that, you will uh, start to have chest pain. And the very last one is your spasm. So in this case, you notice how it clenches. Because of that, similar to atherosclerosis, it decreases the amount of blood that's actually able to pass through. Since it limits the amount of blood that's actually able to pass through, again, you're going to have the chest pain or the chest tightness. Now, the question is, what actually happens during a heart attack? Up here, it says, occurs when the coronary arteries, that's what we talked about earlier from the images, the coronary arteries that supply the heart muscle becomes blocked. When it becomes blocked, that's not a good thing. You have both partially blocked and fully blocked. In a partially blocked blood vessel, the heart will have what we call angina, mild chest pain. However, when it's a fully blocked, that means no blood is able to flow through that coronary artery. When it's fully blocked, you have a full onset heart attack or in a medical term, myocardial infarction. Now your coronary artery disease, or we call CAD or CAD, is one of the most common and serious effects of aging. Because as we get older, we do have a small buildup of fatty as or not fatty as or fatty tissues in the vessels. So fatty deposits build up in the blood vessel walls and it narrows the passage of that blood actually flowing through the artery. The more that builds up, the harder for the blood to actually flow through. The resulting condition called atherosclerosis often leads to eventual blockage. So again, you have that buildup and buildup of that fatty of that fatty tissue. And as it builds up, it's decreasing the amount of blood flow that's going through that coronary artery. And because of that, that's the onset of a heart attack. One thing is very unique. Heart disease in the United States. If you take a look at this chart, I put this chart in here. This chart coming from the CDC from uh, 20, uh, February 21st, 2022. Your heart disease for the United States is the leading cause of death for men, women, and, pe and people of most racial and ethnic groups in the United States. If you take a look at that chart, notice I broke it down into white, non-Hispanic, black, non-Hispanic, Hispanic, and Asian. One thing is very unique. 
And all of them noticed that the males, except for uh, Hispanic, noticed that the males die more often. So if you take a look for white, not Hispanic, 22.7 compared to 19.8 for males. Black males, 21. Females, 20. For Hispanic, is an even 15.8. However, for Asian, notice that's significant. 20 percent for males, 17.8 for females. So guys, why are we dying of heart diseases more than women. One thing is lack of exercise and poor diet. If you don't know how to cook, you go out and get the fast food, they are high in cholesterol, you're constantly consuming that, that's clogging up the arteries, and then that's why we die. So guys, not picking on you, I mean, I'm a guy too, but we need to learn how to cook and cook healthier. Because in the long run, it means something. If you have a family, if you have children, you want to live long. So again, if you don't know how to cook or well, going out to eat, stop all that fast food eating. Start learning how to cook. Let's cook healthy. Sorry about that. Got on attention. Anyway, all right, one person dies every 34 seconds in the United States from cardiovascular diseases. This can be prevented. Now, skipping down to the second to last bullet. Coronary heart disease is the most common type of heart disease. This is killing over 30, um, 380,000 people in 2020. So it is now 2023. So in 2020, this heart disease killed over 380,000. That's scary. That's letting us know that someone is having a heart attack every 30 seconds. The question is, if they're having a heart attack, if like a family member, if they're having a heart attack, what are you going to do? Do you know what the signs and symptoms are of them having a heart attack? What are the signs and symptoms of a heart attack? Now, very unique. Men and women, yes, we're both human, but we do have somewhat different symptoms. On the left, that left side, let's start with the men. We have sweating, what we call perfume sweating, just sweating for no reason. Pain in the chest, in the arms, in the neck, and sometimes you, they will say pain radiating to the jaw. Shortness of breath, or what we call dyspnea, difficulty breathing, heartburn, or indigestion. On the right side of the women, you have your dizziness, uncomfortable pain between shoulder blades. Now, one thing is very unique. When it comes to uncomfortable pain between shoulder blades, sometimes this is misdiagnosed. So females, if you have a family history of heart disease and you begin to have uncomfortable pain or you begin to have pain between shoulder blades and you're not exercising something of that nature, please get it checked out. We want to find this. We want to actually identify if this is a heart problem at the very beginning, then wait until the end. Just like men, you have shortness of breath, what we call dyspnea or tachypnic, difficulty breathing or fast breathing. You also have indigestion or gas-like pain. And lastly, unexplained fatigue and sleep disturbances. So the biggest take-home message from this is you will have pain. Either it's going to be in the front or the back. If you have any type of chest pressure, chest pain, anything of that nature, difficulty breathing, excessive sweat, you want to get checked out because this is not normal. These are signs and symptoms saying, letting your body or have your body saying, hey, something is not right. We need to fix it. This the left side is the EKG, what we call the swell lead. So anytime you have any type of chest pain, you go to the hospital, go to the doctor or call 911. The paramedics are going to put a swell lead on you. And that's allowing us to see the heart in a 3D aspect. So we can see all around instead of what we call one dimensional or two dimensional, we get a three dimensional view. And as paramedics, we'll learn to read these EKGs. So if I'm looking at Lee's V2 here, I notice there's an elevation. Again, when looking at this, this is called a, a QRS complex. So notice that this area here and this area here are high. So for me, that's letting me know that is an elevated or a high ST elevation. Having a high T elevation is letting me know is either ischemia or some type of heart attack that is occurring. The higher it is, the worse it is. So again, if you have any type of chest pain, anything like that, please get it checked. Now, for risk factors, age. So yes, as we get older, our hearts do get a little weaker. That's why we need exercise. Other risk factors, tobacco use, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or high triglycerides. We have two types of triglycerides. You have the good fats and bad fats. When we say high triglycerides, we're talking about the, fat, uh, the bad ones the ones that are actually causing the osteosclerosis or the clogging of the arteries. Obesity, which is very prominent, 
in the African American community. Diabetes is another one, very prominent in the African American community. These are the things we have to fix. You may have a family history of stress alone. You know people who have a stressful job and they the stress has got to them and they died um, at, at a job from overstress. Illegal drug use, lack of exercise, and poor diet. Notice lack of exercise and poor diet also correlates to obesity and diabetes. We have to exercise. Now, there are some complications. If you take a look at the top, you have arrhythmias, cardiogenic shock, heart failure, pericarditis, and cardiac arrest. Now, arrhythmias, just like Facebook said, heart attack damage can affect how electrical signals move through the heart, causing the heartbeat changes. But what they're saying is, this is irregular heartbeats. Normally, you have what we call a sinus rhythm, a dump 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 kind of thing. Now, when it comes to arrhythmias or irregular heartbeat, they may have what we call a flutter or something of that nature is an irregular heartbeat. So you don't hear a thump thump. You may hear a thump flutter, thump flutter, something of that nature. So it's an irregular heartbeat. Now, if that signal is not pushed like it's supposed to be, there are detrimental effects where you could have a heart attack. Cardiogenic shock. A rare condition occurs when there's a sudden abruptly, um, sorry, when there's suddenly abruptly uh, the heart is unable to pump the blood. So there could be a hit to the chest and it causes that electrical system to go out of whack. And it, at the same time, is significant damage to the heart. So again, cardiogenic shock is not common, but it does happen. Heart failure, which is very common. You may not hear heart failure. You may hear congestive heart failure. And what that's saying is the, damp the heart has been damaged so much that it's hard for that heart to effectively pump blood throughout the body. So if they have heart failure, if somebody has heart failure, so think about your family members. If somebody has heart failure, notice how their extremities, their arms and their legs tend to be swollen. More likely, their legs tend to be swollen, so they wear pressure stockings or pressure socks to help push that fluid out. So that's one thing. And like I say, if that heart is not pumping like it's supposed to and it's not pushing the blood through, that blood will back up. Not good. Pericarditis. Notice the key word here is itis, I-T-I-S. That means there's an infection. So in this, there's an infection so, um, in a, per in a per pericardium. So sometimes a heart attack triggers a faulty immune system response. So basically, there's an infection and it needs to be treated. Lastly, cardiac arrest, which is what everybody's familiar with. That's when they just drop all of a sudden. I, won't, I don't like to use the term drop dead, but the heart stops beating for some reason. And because of that, CPR is needed. So again, your complications, arrhythmia, cardiogenic shock, heart failure, pericarditis, and cardiac arrest. Now, how do we prevent this? If we have this, the reasons why we actually have these coronary artery diseases, how do we prevent it or how do we slow down that progress? You follow a healthy lifestyle. If you smoke, stop smoking. If you're obese or living on a healthy lifestyle, Maintain a healthy weight. Begin to exercise, regular exercise. Manage your stress. Eat better. Instead of going out to eat, cook your own food. Saves you money too, but cook your own food because now you control what ingredients go in the food. You control how much salt, how much butter, or anything of that nature actually goes in the food. And that can help decrease the clogging of the arteries. Manage other health conditions. So again, here it says certain health, certain conditions such as high blood pressure, and diabetes can increase the risk of heart attacks. One thing is very unique. Uh, like I said in, previous, in a previous um, slide or previous recording, my mother had a massive heart attack, had a 98% blockage. She has both high blood pressure and type, uh, type 2 diabetes. Knowing this, it could have been prevented. So this increased or we call it exacerbated her effects of having a heart attack. Now she's on the other end and she's actually exercising. So she survived the heart attack, thank the Lord. But now she's exercising and she realized, hey, I need to exercise. I need to control my blood pressure. I need to control this diabetes. Now that is going on, she's lost the weight. She's looking better and she's moving a lot faster. So again, if you have other medical conditions, make sure you pay attention to those. Just like at the bottom right, if you're taking medications, make, you take, make sure you're taking them correctly. The overall objective is to actually get off of medication altogether, but there are some cases, uh, some instances you may not be able to. So make sure you take your medication regularly. Are they having a heart attack? How do you know? 
If someone is unconscious and you think they're having a heart attack, first call 911 or your local emergency number. In America, it is, or in the United States, it's 911, but in other countries, it's a different number. So make sure you know. Then check and uh, check the person to make sure they're breathing and if they have a pulse. If they're breathing, they have a pulse, CPR is not needed. But if they do not have a pulse, you need to initiate CPR. Because again, the blood is not circulating throughout the body. The blood is not circulating throughout the body. Oxygen is not flowing throughout the body. They will die. If you're untrained in CPR, do, do what we call hands-on CPR. That means what you see on TV, just pump on that chest 100 to 120 compressions per minute. One way to think about it, which we'll get in the CPR section for our next Medical Monday, is go to the beat of the, um, of the song, The Bee Gees. Ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. Again, I know it's kind of crazy to have that song in your mind, but at the same time, you go to that beat. Because, again, you want them to stay alive. But you go to that beat, that's anywhere from 100 to 120 compressions a minute. That will help save that person. Now, if you're trained in CPR, you already know that song, and you're probably in the background singing and dancing to it now. I see you smiling. If you're trained in it, and you're confident in your ability, start with 30 chest compressions before giving two rescue groups. Now, one thing is very unique. Yes, we got COVID and all these other diseases going around, so people don't want to do rescue groups. That's fine. The thing is, we must do chest compressions. Out of all things, chest compressions must get done. Person's like, well, if you're doing chest compressions, they can't breathe. You need to realize when you're doing chest compressions, every time you get pull or uh, release on the chest, air is coming in. As air or oxygen is coming in, you're pushing down, you have circulate it throughout. So chest compressions is better than nothing. We're going to test your knowledge with two scenario cases. Here we go. In case number one, your stubborn aunt is visiting and wants to see how you've decorated your room. After climbing the stairs to your room, you know she is breathing heavily and has her hands on her chest, as if her chest hurts. You ask, Auntie, are you okay? And she says, I'm fine, baby, I'm fine. Just a little indigestion. What would you do? She might be having a small heart attack or she might be okay. You need to know her background. Pain in the chest and indigestion can be symptoms of a heart attack. So you want to keep an eye on her. If she feels worse, make sure to seek medical attention. At this point, CPR is not needed because, again, she's up. She's talking. She's what we call CAO3, conscious, alert, oriented, times three. She can, she's aware of her surroundings, so CPR is not needed because blood is flowing. But if she goes unresponsive, then yes. You're at a school basketball game. Your team is one point behind, so they're down one point, and the crowd is going wild. All of a sudden, the coach faints. Boom. And the gym gets quiet. People nearby try to wake her, but she's not responding. What do you do? She doesn't respond. This is serious. It could be a stroke. We don't know. Because she is not responding, this is not a simple fainting episode or what's called a syncope episode. We need to call for emergency help. Someone trained in CPR should begin performing CPR. If there's no one trained in CPR, someone should come down and begin chest compressions and to maintain her circulation. If you got close to this answer, perfect. Perfect. Again, we're just going over it, so it's new to you all. Now, to summarize, we talked about heart physiology. That means we took a look at the heart. And for there, we're actually able to identify the heart and other arteries or arteriosclerosis and things of that nature. We also talked about what happens during a heart attack. We, got, we became familiar with coronary artery disease. And we know that's the leading cause of death in America. We're now able to identify both signs and symptoms of a heart attack. So you know what to look for. So again, if you were family members, if they have heart problems, make sure you pay attention to them. That doesn't mean stand over them like a hawk. Just make sure you keep an eye out on my family functions. Make sure everything's going okay. If they're by themselves, go, hey, auntie, uncle, grandma, grandpa, papa, or whatever. Are you okay? Is there anything I can do? So just keep an eye out on them. We also learned the risk, the risk factors. What causes coronary artery disease? We learned about the complications, those five complications. We learned how to prevent 
coronary artery disease or how to slow it. And we also learned the steps to intervention. So as you can tell from the heart attack edition, there's a lot that we covered. Thank you for joining me for the heart attack edition. Next Medical Monday, we're going to cover CPR. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at info at whitesidetacticalsolution.com. Again, that's info at whitesidetacticalsolution.com. K1906, sounding off.